Good afternoon, Sava from Sava Talk Spurs here. I hope you are all well and looking forward to your weekends. It is, of course, game weekend for Tottenham Hotspur. We are playing at home to Wolverhampton Wanderers. Unfortunately, I've had to give my two tickets away uh, because I have some wedding stuff that I need to sort out. Um, plus, the train strike just meant I couldn't get about very easily. So, uh, what did I want to talk to you today? My daily thought. My daily thought is this. I watched a couple of uh, a couple of YouTube shows last night and I genuinely believe that a number of our fans are getting really confused as to the difference between depth of a squad and the quality of the depth. I truly believe that. Now when people are talking about how good is this window? People say, is it a six? Is it a seven? Is it an eight? Is it a nine? Have we shown ambition? Have we backed the manager? You know, uh, we've gone all out. We've changed our style. This is a new Levy. Yada, yada, yada. We can talk about all of that. But the way I look at it is this. This is only me, right? It's only me. I look at it like this. I look at it and say, to get better, you need to be better on the pitch. To be better on the pitch, it starts with the first 11. Now, yes, you need a squad. But what I keep hearing from people is, well, we've improved the bench. And that's baffling to me. No top team goes and improves the bench before they've actually finished improving their first 11. Do they? If I'm wrong, tell me. I mean, you tell me which club went out first. Did, did City go and improve their bench when they first started getting bad, first started spending big? Did Liverpool? Or did they go and buy players immediately for the first 11? Because I remember Liverpool going and buying Salah, Mane, Firmino, yeah, <laughs> Fabinho, Alisson, Van Dijk. I don't remember any of those guys going in and sitting on a bench to begin with. So, yes, squad is important, very important, because it's squads that win your leagues. But surely you've got to address the first 11. Now, for me, I see gaping holes still in this first 11. So when people are telling me we've got lots of squad depth, I don't believe the quality is there. And I'm going to talk you through what I mean. I'm a huge believer. I don't believe in just saying something for the sake of it. I believe that if I tell someone I think their opinion is wrong, I will explain why. I will break it down. So let me try this. I'm going to show you this. I have split the Spurs team into two. I've put down what I think is arguably our best eleven. Versus what would be our second string 11. Then I'm going to go through what I believe are the holes in our team. And the fact that what's coming off the bench doesn't fill those holes. And there's not actually the depth of quality that we think there is. For me, having players like Sessegnon, Royal, Davis, Skip on the bench. That for me isn't quality. That's numbers. That's a lot of players. That's numbers. So we'll never not be able to field an eleven. But it doesn't quite scream quality. So let's go through this. If I look at this team, sorry, you won't be able to see me now, but I'm sure some of you will think this is better. Um, I think this is our strongest 11. Now, look, everyone's going to have their own opinions, but I would say pound for pound, this isn't far off when everyone is fit, what our 11 should be. Hugo Lloris is a no-brainer in goal. He's the best goalkeeper by a country mile. Romero is our best centre-back. Dyer is our best centre-back. Let that sink in. The fact that Dyer is our best centre-back in our strongest 11 tells you that there is gaping holes in this team. And then I put Longley in. Again, I, this is Longley going off of what I've seen a couple of years back. He looks good on the ball. But again, early days, for me, I think we need better. So I think there's gaping holes in that back three, but I do think Longley is much better than Ben Davis as a footballer, as a ball player, as a defender. I think he is much, much better. Doherty, I believe, is our best right wing back. I think we saw that when both he and Royal were fit last year. He got the nod and was actually having a good run of games, scoring goals, assists, and for me, is a much better footballer than Emerson Royal, who I don't really rate. I don't apologise for this. I don't make any apologies for my opinions. The best two for me in the middle have got to be Benton Core and Basuma. I think Basuma's a fantastic box to box midfielder with a lot of energy, can break up play, can drive forward. Not really a lot of creativity there, but he does that job really well from what we've seen at Brighton. 
And then Benton Core is the player that can put his foot on the ball. Good passing. Some games run by him. They go past him. Some games he wants too much time on the ball, like we saw against Chelsea last week. But I still think him and Basuma are the best pairing. Then, without a shadow of a doubt, Ivan Perisic, for me, is the best left wing back, the best the best left wing back in the club by a country mile. I think the drop-off from him and Sessegnon is absolutely huge. But I don't think there'll be too many people querying that. If they do query that, then I query their sanity. Then the best front three picks itself. Son, Kane and Kulu. I don't really think there's any need for me to go into that. Now, you would say that front three is phenomenal. I would say that we could get a better midfielder than Benton Court. I would say we can get a better right back than Doherty. <laughs> I mean, that goes without saying. I still feel we massively need a creative force in there and a top right wing back. Then when you look at the two centre backs, I still think other than Romero, it is, it's very average. I think neither of them are good in the air. I think I think it's it's okay. But I would I, you know, Longley's had a couple of difficult years. Dyer for me, again, a decent centre back, turns his back on the ball. And I know fans don't want to hear this, but Dyer turns his back on the ball, his positioning isn't great, and he's not good in the air. That and from set pieces, he is abysmal with his marking. So that for me is where a lot of work can be done still in the strongest eleven. So now let's look at the, the rest of the squad to see what we've got. This, for me, would be our reserve team. Now, when I look at that, this is what people are telling me is a strong bench. This is what people are telling me is strength in depth. Now, Forster, I've not got nothing against Forster. He's a very good backup keeper. I've got no problems with that. Sanchez, I mean, for me, he's not that good a defender. I think he's a very poor defender. He's been here, what, five, six years now. Not made his mark. For me, not good enough. Tanganga is another poor defender who's rash, jumps in. Is he a right back? Is he a centre back? Why is he never given a run of games in the team? Davis, for me, is a steady Eddie. He's okay. But I wouldn't say any of those three are great. And then you put that with Longley and Dyer, who also aren't great. That's five of the six centre-backs, which I think are very, very mediocre. Then we look at the two wing-backs, Royal and Sessegnon. Royal and Sessegnon, I'm sorry for these people that keep telling me they are good and quality players. I can only suggest you've not been going to Tottenham for many years because these two are very poor. They're not good in attack. They're not particularly good defending. Their positional sense is poor. I don't think they're particularly good uh, from set pieces. Um, they don't beat a man. I, I, I just, for me, a very big drop off from the first two. And again, is that quality coming off the bench? Here's the middle bit. Now, Hoiberg and Skip, I've got no problem with either of them. Both hardworking, honest midfielders. But that's all they are. They are hardworking and honest. For me, there's not really a lot of quality there. Now, this word quality is a word I heard my mate Coover using last night. When people kept saying, oh, we've got this and we've got that, Coover would say, but is there real quality? I think those two are okay. But again, coming off the bench, are they changing a game? I don't think they are. Then I look at the front three. Lucas has been here for God knows how long. God bless what he did in the Champions League semi-final. But in the three seasons preceding that, he's averaged three goals a season. He's a sometimes player. You never know what you're going to get. For me, this is not a top option off the bench. This is not quality. Go to the left, Brian Hill, if he stays. If not, I can't think who else will go there. Brian Hill, again, came over. Lots of tricks, lots of flicks. Is he the answer? Is that strength off the bench? I don't know. And then Richarlison, I'll give you, I think that is strength off the bench. Richarlison's the one here where I go, yeah, that is a game changer. That is someone that can come on and change the game. So when I look at these teams, and hopefully, please, put your, put your comments in while, while I'm having this chat. That's what this is all about. What's there from a quality depth perspective? 
I still see it that, look, Christian Romero got injured this week and loads of our fans have gone into meltdown. Of it. Oh my God, Romero's not playing. Of course, we knew that. We knew that because we've not signed any other centre-halves. And then I'm hearing fans go, oh, well, there's not many out there. Really? There's not many centre-halves out there. Is this what you're telling yourself to make yourself feel better? That there's not many out there. Then I hear that Vardy and Bastonia, the only two that Conte wants and we're getting them next summer. Okay, what if someone bigger comes in next summer and we've waited a whole year to get two players that go to bigger teams? Because Vardy has got suitors, Bastoni will, the likes of Man City, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, they're going to be all over these players. So what, we've got no other options other than these two. I just don't buy it. I think that's really poor scouting. That's really poor preparation. So when I look at it, I think we've got a good 11, good I think we've got some real quality. Look at the front three, Romero, yeah, Larice, some real quality. Perisic. Then there's three or four areas where I still think need massive improvement. So before people talk to me about, well, we've improved the bench, what about the 11? Now, I get called toxic and I get called negative, and that's fine. I can cope with that. That's fine. I've been saying these things for 20 odd years, and it's still the same. I've been saying these same things. For me, I find fans negative that settle for mediocrity. Fans that tell me oh, it's a building process. Look where we'll be in three or four years. What, when Kane and Son are 33 and 34? We're going to build around them at 33 and 34. So look, for me, I see it that my positivity is that I want more. I want better. Loads of you see it as negativity. The man that wants better is negative. The fans that settle for mediocrity are positive. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. So look, that's my assessment. Let me know what you guys think. I will be going live at 4 p.m. Coover will be there. We'll be inviting guests on to chat and join with us. What we call a football phone-in or a fan phone-in or whatever you want to call it. Much love as always. The two ticket winners were won by Ashley Waters. I have put it on Instagram. Ashley, well done. I hope whoever you take, you and that person have fun. But... Don't fear. Next week, there'll be a shirt giveaway. And the week after, there'll be two tickets up for grabs for Fulham at home. So thank you for all your continued support. Much love. And as always, come on, you Spurs. <laughs>